Hi, so I thought I'd do another demo video of one of the games I'm going to be demonstrating at the UK Games Expo. This time it is Overbooked. It's a game about um, being on the service desk of a busy airline at an airport, putting passengers on your plane. And I'm just going to run through it here. It's set up on the table here for two players. And it's got some real nice components. So we'll just cut straight to the chase, go straight on and have a look. Okay, so overbooked. I've got the table set up. Um, it takes a lot of space up on the table. It's good. It's got a nice table presence. You get um, it's a one to four player game, and each player will get their own aircraft. It looks like this. If you're playing one to three players, you get an aircraft like that. If you're playing a four player game, you get less seats on the aircraft and two rows. And the idea of the game is you're going to be sitting passengers on your aircraft. They're going to come in here at departure lounge. And um, they start here, they work their way down, and you pick a passenger card and you'll be placing them on your plane. There's some really nice components in this game. So the departure lounge, for instance, has these double-sided tiles. So like, I've got a red player here. So I'll set up his service desk and I've got a blue player. So I will set up, hang on, let me have a look. That looks like blue, blue service desk. And on the other side, the amount of table space, you can actually set up blanks for non-players, where they don't actually have anything on them, but on the other side, they obviously have busy surface desks. So a lot of the graphics in this game, a lot of the, the, the imagery is absolutely marvellous. The game is set up a bit like this, and then we have passengers. Now, I've baggied all my passengers, because, well, there's an awful lot of them. But there are five different passenger types and they all want to be seated differently. So let me go through each of the passenger types. They're each a different colour. Let me just get one out of each. Okay, so we'll start with, let's start with the lovers. So these are red passenger types. The lovers, I assume you can see that's red. Might need a bit more light on it. Hang on, let's see if that helps. Right, okay, so they're lovers. Now lovers want to sit on a plane next to each other, like so. So if you can get two lovers next to each other on your plane, you will score five points at the end of the game. However, lovers do not like to be sitting in threes or fours. So if you do that, if you end up with that in the plane, that will score you no points. You also got to allow for the fact that, that it works in straight lines. So that would score you five points. But again, if there was another lover all anywhere around there, no points. They don't like sitting in threes, they don't like sitting in fours, they want to be the only two on the plane next to each other. Um, children are the white characters. Let me just hold that up. There's a child. Children need to be boxed in by adults. So what was meant by that is the child is here boxed in against a window. That will score you three points. If the child's boxed in against an aisle, that scores three points. If a child is boxed in totally by adults like that, again, three points. However, you will not score points if a child is like that at the end of an empty seat next to them. And you will also won't score points if you have two children sitting next to each other because they cause a lot of problems. So that's um, children. So that leaves three other colours, or four other colours, should I say. No, three other colours. So that leaves three other colours. And these are very simple rules. So these are the sports fans, the blues. They want to sit in the biggest group they can on the plane. So if you can get a group of four or five all sitting next to each other, great. You then have the yellow colour or the orangey colours where they are friends and they have the same rules. And then finally you've got green, which are OAPs. They also want the same rules. So basically you're trying to get the biggest group of blue, the biggest group of yellow and the biggest group of green on a plane together. So, how are the passengers decided? Well, there is a passenger deck of cards. And let me just pop. Okay, so there are several cards in the game. You have event cards. Now, this is for more advanced rules, but to be honest with you, they don't make the game too difficult. So, with event cards, you can if you wish, you don't have to use them. You can shuffle them up and draw two and they have different rules on them like how to score bonus points. So in this case this says Lonely Christmas where if any lovers are sitting on their own 
at the end of the game you lose three points and here is a buddy time where you have got to try to get three three and three in one area so three blue three green three yellow three blue in one area that will score you a bonus of five points so you can put them down and they're like score modifiers for the game for the end game now you can use them you don't have to use them because they they add to the game and there's lots of events in here they've all got various different win conditions various different ways of bonus scoring bonus points or even losing points at the end of the game you then have passport cards and there's two sorts the majority are orange so orange is how people want to sit so for instance here you've got a green a green a red a red and a white so that is two OAPs, two lovers, and a child in between the two. And there's black passport cards, which are exactly the same as the orange ones, except they're more difficult ones to sit. So they generally have more squares on, and you need to do a bit of work to get people on the plane. So the passport cards are shuffled up and stuck here, this side of security. So that's security there. And then four are dealt out into the departure lounge here. Now there's one other thing. Each player has some luncheon vouchers. Or should I say, each player should have some food vouchers. So each service desk will have six to start with. One, two, three, four, five, six. And essentially this is like a timeline. So the passengers here have been waiting the longest and you could take that card for free and then you'd have to see, sit the passengers on your plane in that configuration. However, if you don't want that card, you want this card, you have to pay them a food voucher and take that card. Or if you want this card, you have to put a food voucher on each card before it and then grab. So that the food vouchers stay on the cards, then if the next person, for instance, takes this card, they get the food voucher in here so they can use that to buy food, uh, to buy cards themselves. Generally with six vouchers each play, you rarely run out, so it's always worth using your food vouchers to, to buy a card if you'd rather not pick up the first card. So we're not playing with events. Events are score modifiers for the end of the game, but I'm going to put them, that deck away for now. There is one other thing I need to cover, which is end game. The game ends when one passenger type runs out. And there are some advanced cards on the passenger. Like there's some icons on these cards that actually mean different things. So again, this is advanced rules. You don't have to do it, but these icons in the top left corner, they mean different things. So this means you can sh you can sit people across the aisle. So when it comes down to it, if I was to draw this card as a blue player, let's just say I got this card as a blue player, I would take a green, a green, and a red. I take a red and two greens from the pool and then I'd have to sit them on the plane in that configuration. Now I could do it that way round so I could do something like that and that would be fine but you can also turn the card so there's nothing stopping you turning the card and putting them in that configuration or upside down or that way round. You can also if you play the advanced rules, that icon in the top right corner of the card there means you can sit them across the aisle. So that means you could do something like that, where it's across the aisle. But normally you're not allowed to. So hang on, let me just hold that up if I can. As you can see, I put them across the aisle on the plane. But if you play the normal rules and you don't play with these icons, then that's fine. You can do that, but you don't get the, the benefit of the bonuses. So there's one icon that looks like that, which means you can sit across the aisle. This aisle means one passenger didn't turn up. So that means to say you could say you didn't want the red person, you could just take the two blues and the red person didn't turn up. This one is a, at the end of the game, you will get a bonus point if you've got this card. So if you pick the card up, it's worth a victory point at the end of the game. I'm just wondering if there is any more symbols. I think there might be, hang on. Oh yes, this this one is you return a passenger back to the departure lounge rather than putting them on your steps. I'll come to that in a second. So, departure lounge. So as your plane fills up, this game is called Overbooked, and as your plane fills up, you'll find that you can't place people without 
unfortunately having to kick someone off. So if your plane's totally full and you have to kick someone off, you put them on your steps. You cannot kick off someone off the sheet. So if they're going to sit like this, these will join your plane. There's, you can't go, well, I don't want the two blue ones, I'll just stick them straight on the steps. You're not allowed to do that. You have to take people off your board and put them on the steps. To do it, so if you put them on the steps, they're worth minus points at the end of the game. So these are the people you've kicked off your plane. And trust me, you will end up kicking people off your plane. The game is played when one passenger pool runs out. So when one colour runs out, the game is is technically over. However, there's a first player marker, which is absolutely marvellous. Look at that, it's like a little aircraft controller. So every player has the same number of turns. That's very important. So if player one ends the game, player two will still get a turn. In the case of, say for instance, all the reds run out, when player two draws a card, if it's a red thing, they, they ignore it, the passenger never turned up. So I am going to have a quick game of this. I'm going to change that card out because that's one of the difficult cards. I'm just being a bit cheeky. And I'll, I'll just go for it quickly and probably just build up both cards. Play in blue, then red, blue, then red. So blue's going to have the first go. And we've got this special card here. And if you look at the symbols, it actually shows um, someone sitting in the middle and it's a child and a lover sitting in the middle as well. I think these cards are a bit more powerful. There's also a window seat version of it, which isn't on the board. So that means to say I could take a lover and a child and I can put them um, both in the middle row of the plane. So that's what, exactly what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to put the child at the front in the middle there and the lover on the other side. Okay, and then the card slide down and replenish. Oh, there's a window seat one. So the top one there means to say put someone by the window and that means put someone by the aisle. So now it's the red player's turn. The red player's going to grab this card. You can, you can play it that way around. You can play it upside down, any way around they like. So it's going to take a white, two yellows and a green. White, two yellows and a green. And I think he's just going to stick them in the corner here because the child needs to be boxed in. So the, the theory is that hopefully you get an adult here and that'll be boxed in that corner there of the plane. And can you see that? You can now. Okay, so I'll box the child in on that corner. So the steps would normally be off the side of the plane, but I don't really have room for that. So I'm just gonna put the played cards here. Again, everything slides down, grab a new card. So Blue's seen this card, thinks if they want that, so they're going to take a couple of vouchers from their service desk, feed these two people and take that card. So this card is a red by the window seat and a red by the aisle seat. So they don't have to be on the same row, so I could put the red by the aisle seat there and the red on the window seat over here somewhere. But they don't have to be on the same row. So very handy that. Slide that along, turn the card. Okay, so the cards slide along. So now it is Red's turn. Red is going to pick a card. And I think Red, looking at his board, probably likes the look of this one. So he gets the voucher and puts that in the service desk. Everything else slides down. And a new card is put in there. Because they have only just arrived. These people have been waiting in the airport for a long time. So we've got a red and two greens. And again, he's going to turn the card around. And I find in this game it is actually really helpful if you like lay the card flat and turn it around sometimes rather than a lot of people hold it like this and they're like, oh, I don't get it. I don't know how. It... Plus also, to be fair, if you're doing it in front of everyone and everyone can see what you're trying to do, they'll soon point out when you made a mistake. And when it gets busy, it can easy. It's very easy to actually make a mistake on your plane letting people out. Probably not intentionally. So let's just put... A uh, green person there, green person there, and a red person there. Cool. So now the blue will draw a card. And early game, you are literally going to be drawing cards and placing people. And the idea is obviously to try and get these colours next to each other on each of the planes. But very early on in the game, there's loads of space. You're not going to stress too much about it. So we're going to get blue, blue, and a red. Blue, blue, and a red. 
So I am going to place them there, there, and there. Oh wait, but the, the advanced card there says that one person that turned out, well, I'm not going to have the red person because that would have messed my scoring up at the bottom of the screen, uh, bottom of the plane here, so I've removed the red person and just kept two blues. Okay, now it's red's turn and I'm, I'm going to keep doing this and keep playing the game and uh, I will cut, I think, towards the end where the plane will be a bit fuller and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I've moved the game on a bit, and this is a little bit artificial because I've just laid the people out, but it, it, it sets up the way the game was probably looked towards the end of the game. You've got lots of passengers sitting down, lots of gaps on your plane which you need to fill, and you're still picking passengers up. There's only a few yellow left, so I've probably run out of yellow first. Um, it's red person's turn, so red's gonna take this card, and they need two yellow, a red, a blue and a green and they need to place them on the plane it's going to be a struggle to place without kicking other people off so what they might do is and they might not have picked this card up to be fair but I'm just trying to get to the end of the game and show you what happens when you try to place things and you don't have the space um, the symbol means I can place it across denial if I wish if I'm playing the advanced rules and it might be best if I did that. So I'm going to place it down this middle section here because I think it'll fit. So I have a yellow in the top here. So I put a yellow there, a red goes underneath there, a yellow goes here, but this green dude's in the way. So he gets kicked off the plane and the yellow goes there. A blue goes here, but again, this guy gets kicked off and then a green goes in underneath like so. And so these are all negative points down here. So we'll then go back to the blue player. The blue player is going to pick a card. They like the look of the second card there with the two yellows and a white. So they grab that card. They take two yellows and a white. Let me grab the white. What have I done with them? Here they are. And they're going to place them on theirs. So they're trying to get the yellows to two yellows and a white, so that's quite good. That's gonna sit one there, one in there, one in there. Oh, let's turn around. Okay, so it's red player's turn again. There's only two yellow dudes left in the game. So they are going to pick a card, which will pretty much force the end of the game. So they pick this one, they put food voucher on that one. And then they decide that they're gonna get one red two yellows and a white. And they, they need to place these. So two yellows at the bottom. No, wait. They're gonna kick this yellow one off and replace it with a child. Oh, and they're gonna kick that yellow off and replace it with a red dude. That probably wasn't a good move, but never mind. We're now at a yellow players altogether. There aren't any more yellow pieces. So the game would end. And the game ended because it had been player one's turn again. So everyone's had the same number of turns. So that's very important. At this point, um, on the cards there are some plus ones which you might need for scoring. So you can always flick through and just pull them up. Blue just has one of them. Let's have a look and see if there's any plus ones here. There's one, two. So they've got two. Okay, and we go to the baggage carousel. So the baggage carousel has some blocks. Let me get the red and blue blocks out. Red and blue to represent scoring. And the carousel's a bit out of view, so I'm gonna bring it forward. And, nope. Gotta make some room for it, hopefully, and bring it in camera. So if I hold it up, then you can see it in focus. There's zero to 100 at the top and then there's 0 to 19 round the sides. So it gets to 19, then the middle section goes up. So we have two reds, two blues. They're both on 0 to begin with. And then you do the scoring. So scoring is really simple in this game. Essentially, you follow the score chart. that Everyone has one of these. 
And so the first thing you do is you look for lovers. So people who are two reds together without any other reds. So we've got one, two, three. So three, three a lot of that, 15 points for the blue player. And then on the red side, you've got one, no, that is three people sitting together, so that doesn't count. So the red player only scored five points. Not a great start for the red player. Let me put that card there. Right. So then we go down the card, right, and now we score children. They're worth three points for every child that's boxed in. Well, blue hasn't boxed any child in down here. There's one boxed in at the front of the plane. So that's three points for blue. And then the red player has got not boxed in. That one is boxed in. Diagonals don't matter. So that's five, That's three points. And again, unfortunately, three points for red. Okay. I think I might have gave red an extra point there. Never mind. No, that's fine. Okay, so now we need to find the largest blocks of colour of each of the three different types. So we'll start with, let's say, sports people. And on the blue plane, it's not very easy to see, but one is the biggest number they got together. On the red plane, they got one, two, three, four to sitting together down here in the bottom. So the red won that. So blue gets one point. Whereas red get four, and because they're the highest scoring, they double, so they get eight. So two eight to 16, red's back in the game. So we've done the blues, so we'll go on to the OAPs, which are the green colours. Blue has got one, two, three, four, five sitting together there. Red has got three sitting together there. So in this case, red gets three points, two, three, and blue gets five points, but it's doubled to 10 points. So they're going to go up to 29 points. And that leaves the yellows left. So the yellows, we look for the biggest group. There's a three there, but there's a one, two, three, four, five here. That doesn't count because it's diagonal and it's being blocked by the child and the lover. So one, two, three, four, five. And on, so that's five points there. On this side, on the red side, we've got a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that is worth 14 points, that's worth five. So blue will get five, brings them up to 14 there, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 14 points. So that would take him to 13 and a blob there. So far, so good. Lunch vouchers. So blue's got four lunch vouchers left. They're half, so you get, he gets two points. One, two, and red's got two, four, six. So he gets three points, one, two, three. Both, both teams are scoring currently which is uh, drawing, sorry, currently, not scoring. They are scoring, but they're also drawing. Okay, so that's most of the positive points. And you've got the victory points on the cards if you're playing the rules, so that blue got one there and red got two. We established that earlier. Cool. Now for the problems. You lose points for every passenger you kick off the plane, you lose two points. Well, blue done really well and didn't kick anyone off, but red kicked off one, two, three, four, Two, four, five. Five people. So red's going to lose 10 points. And so we'll just get 10 points off red score. Uh, that brings him back down to nine. He also loses two more points for being the most overbooked aircraft. And now we've got the empty seat points lost. So you lose one point for every empty seat. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, point, 15. So blue lose 15 points. And red loses 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 points. And so at the end of the game, if you weren't playing event cards, and the event cards would have obviously changed the score a bit, um, that's how the game is scored. And uh, in this case, the blue team won with uh, an amazing 32 points to the reds 15. And that is overbooked. So, overbooked final thoughts. Um, this game is actually really quite good fun. It's a bit like Tetris in a way. You're trying to seat the little passengers on your plane. You kick them off. And the, the artwork's brilliant. It's very cartoony, very nice. Suitable for all ages, really. 
the box says eight plus. I mean, there is a the, the components are a little bit fiddly. I think the it, it's it's a Tetris type game again. I reckon a child who's who's into gaming could probably handle this game no problem. The scoring isn't overly complicated once you get it. Really, the reds and the whites are the specials, and everything else is grouped together in lumps, so that makes it really easy. Um, yes, the presentation value. The uh, the event cards adds a lot of variety to the game but for the scoring because you can actually throw a couple of event cards in and change the rules of the game. So that's always helpful. Um, and whenever I've demoed it, it's always been a winner, which surprised me a little. Um, not for any reason. I didn't think it would be that popular, but actually people love it. They love the, the graphics, the, the artwork. They love the, the concept. Um, you can make it more difficult using the advanced rules, or you can throw it, leave the black cards out or the black passport cards out and make it easier. So you have several games here. You have the very basic, just setting passengers on the plane and scoring at the end. You can throw in advanced passenger cards to make it more trickier. You can throw in different event cards to, to make, make it more of a challenge, if you wish. And there is a solo mode, which is nice. The solo mode, um, the rules change on the solo mode quite considerably. Uh, does it feel bolted on? No, not really. I guess it might do. I would say it's quite difficult. I have tried. But it's like doing a puzzle. If you like puzzles, you're going to love solo mode because it essentially is you have to play the game and end up with a certain layout on your plane. And there are, what, one, two, three scenarios for solo mode. The rule book is great, nice and clear, very easy to follow. The game is very easy to follow. The one player marker is fantastic. I don't have a lot of bad to say about this game. In fact, I think it's a really good game. The production quality is really high, simple to play, fun to play, easy to learn, difficult to master. You know, what more do you want from a game? So yeah, uh, highly recommended. Um, I think I've demoed this now to two or three groups of people and two of them already bought it or tried to buy it or want to buy it. So that's pretty good. That's pretty, um, that's a, you know, two out of three success rate. Yeah. Cool, well that's overbooked, hope you enjoyed watching the video.